say that I didn't expect myself to find uh, myself as a researcher of the fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because up to now, I've been studying, you know, ancient art and Renaissance art. And then I wanted to work about an image of with a dragon. And the more I got involved in the motive of the women and the dragon, the more I found that modern art gets almost no attention, no museum exhibition, nothing. No. And no academic research whatsoever. The more I got into the issue of dragons and the images of dragons in early modern art, I started to figure out that there is something totally different going on when you look at women with dragons, particularly uh, St. Margaret. Mm. Uh, she appears in many, 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 many images. She was a very popular saint at that time. I really specified myself in Egyptian and the Greco-Roman art, and I kind of deciphered this uh, image. In the base, in the core of this image, I actually found that it's a holy um, event. Mm -hmm. It's a sacred scenario of a collaboration between a sacred image of dragons. Dr dragons were worshipped at that time. They had temples. They were goddesses and gods were switching off and on to their image. There is no animosity between me women and dragons. So women actually strive to union with dragons. They strive to collaboration. And that got me so excited because suddenly I, I could see these images so differently. And that is why I also came to the fantastic because for what I read so far, fantastic artists, they get really criticized for showing really erotic women with dragons. People said that it's a titillation, that it's a diminishing women, that it's objectifying women, that it's all about, you know, light pornography. But then when you read the interviews uh, and the things that these artists say, they say people ask them to not show these women so pro yeah. provocative. And they couldn't. It's like there was something inside of them. They couldn't even ex express why, but they said we admire the human, the, the woman body. body. Um, it's something more than just, uh, you know, eroticness and nakedness. And that's what I want to study because in earlier variation of the motif, you do see erotic interactions with the dragon, particularly in Titian. She's riding the dragon, the, the saint. She has her legs open and exposed and riding the, the dying dragon. So that's fascinating. Scattered around the, the sign of the witch, Mm -hmm. Which is a very important clue, a very important stereotype that was uh, attached to this motif. So. Mm -hmm. And the sign of the fire, of course, the, the, the allegory between dragons and fire is so early on. And, of course, dragons are also allegories to women. Yeah. So uh, women are sort of fire, although it, it's a complicated uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. relationship. And of course, the scene where she's standing very sta stable, very strong, although she's totally naked, she's not uh, projecting any eroticism. And I'm thinking about this scene of the metamorphosis where she goes into the fire as a, you know, as yeah. a slave, as a wife of, as a very uh, humiliated, uh, you know, low uh, class uh, uh, girl. Yeah. and comes up with these tiny dragons and everybody says it gives me the, the goose and yeah. I wanted to, to, to understand why, why does it give us the goose, why does this particular scene throw us to such a different dimension when we see her with the dragons and mm -hmm. they're tiny, they're yeah. helpless, they, they have no worth at that time except, except for being born. Mm. But yet she is becoming immediately a figure of power. She is, now she's worthy of the game of the, of the uh, seat of the throne.
Mostly what I do when I, uh, what I did when I uh, analyzed this image, for starters, look at the um, signs and the symbols and the meaning that it used to have in the past, mm. in ancient Greco-Roman time, in early modern time, which is a bit different, um, particularly the issue of sophistication. Um, because up to now, usually when people said, let's say, dragon in the Middle Ages, uh, there are lexicons that have the value dragon, and they say it's a symbol of the devil, uh, of evil, of uh, death, uh, of hell. So this is a very narrow way of looking at it. While what I figured out is it has a binary meaning uh, value. It can be good, it can be bad. It can can be a uh, healing and helpful and actually the allegory of prudence of wisdom mm -hmm. is a woman with a dragon in early modern art so it has a lot of positive issues and it of course has also a lot of negative issues like the bias of the witch or the bias of the temptation in in the eden scene and then you, you have to take this all together and push it further away in time mm -hmm and then see what's going on with Daenerys. What I suspect I see in her uh, is a kind of a me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> that manifestation. I, I thought about the me too and I said, well, what does the me too wants to really say? It's women reclaiming their power. It's women saying we can look very nice, even very naked and Titulated, it's not okay to claim us. We are not objects. And I thought about that that specific image in Daenerys. And I have to say here, there is a very nice gap between the the, the story, the textual story, and the visual mm. uh, manifestation of it. Because in the text, for example, her hair was uh, burned, so she became like an sort of andronogist and also she was like 13 14 very 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 young so when we imagine the scene when we read it it's she's a kind of androgynous mm. it becomes not a man and not a woman in the series in the television series we see a fully grown woman she can be as small as they, as they want but her um, you know, her body parts are, are all fully grown. Yeah. And she has her hair. Mm. Hair is another symbol. I will not go into that, but hair is a very, very sophisticated symbol in this in this uh, motif. It's a symbol of passion and of uncontrolled um, emotion. And, for example, women in ancient um, Greek, their hair was cut in their marriage ceremony. So... It was set a kind of parallel between their hair and their identity. It's like you're cutting a woman's hair, you're cutting her identity, you're removing her from her mother's or father's house to a different house. Um, so you see there is a gap between the, the story, the textual story, and the visual one. The, the methods I use is semiotics. I'm following the signs, I'm following the symbols, I'm following their previous meanings and try to see if it's continuing or discontinuing. And uh, one of the things I learned about semiotics is that it has the ability to expose meaning even if it's not been intentional. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if the Hollywood people really all thought about how to make her more beautiful and more attractive to the audience, yeah. Still had they still use the hair because it's a sign, it's a symbol mm -hmm. with a meaning. Uh, they know that the meaning is attraction. They know that the meaning has something to do with passion and uh, beauty. They might have not put it intentionally in the no, scene, exactly. but it's there. Yeah, the meaning is there. And, and also, you there. know, another gap that is so interesting be between the text and the visual scene is that in the text she is breastfeeding both uh, two dragons okay that That's two dragons cool. attached to her breast oh. now this is such a famous iconography in middle ages of cleopatra cleopatra okay. is always shown 
her breast exposed and two snakes or dragons, well, snakes and dragons were the same in those eras, mm -hmm. two snakes attached to her breasts. It's a fascinating also idea to find the connection between Daenerys and uh, Cleopatra, with, which was the last descendants of the pharaohs, uh, the, one of the biggest empires in the, and she was the last one. That was the way they showed her suicide, commit suicide, choosing to die. And uh, Daenerys is switched on. That's her way of rebirth, yeah. actually. She's breastfeeding, she's a mother, but she's also reborn herself. Yeah. One of the articles, I'm, I hope it will be accepted, I just submitted it, is a, an article that shows how the image of St. Margaret, which is, she's like a, a candle in a cupcake. <laughs> she sits in the dragon. It tried to show that it's a guide for women to cope with childbirth pains. Like the dragon is allegorized as a as the childbirth pain, yeah. and the woman has to learn not to fight her pain, but to collaborate with it, to team it, and to you know make make it collaborate with her. Ah, yeah. It has to be a relationship of not of fighting, but of you know unifying. Exactly. We're doing this. We're we're both have the same goal to have the baby yeah. and that's another aspect of the Daenerys I think because uh, you, you again see how this motif is related to childbirth to mm. birth rejuvenation yeah. uh, in ancient time it's also all, all about you know death and rejuvenation be, being again uh, gaining a new life wow thank you so much it was a pleasure really it's Always my pleasure to talk about my issues. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye.